Good morning and welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela Demont, your guest host here in Hutchison, Kansas at the Grassroots Cattle Company, a strictly grass-fed cattle operation. Stay with us to learn about the herd genetics, grass-fed cattle, as well as their direct marketing. Stay with us and we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela Demont, your guest host, here with Tori Ball at his farm. First off, tell me a little bit of history and background of your uh, farm. In 1982, uh, my family moved here to uh, the farm just right south of Hutchison. Uh, my great uncle had uh, owned it before that and he sold it to our, my parents. And his grandpa had started it mm -hmm. as a dairy around the turn of the 19, 1900s. And um, um, we moved in then and, and uh, the dairy had had long been gone, the cows had been gone, and uh, dad still worked off the farm for uh, part of the time as, as uh, we built up uh, land base and, and started to add cattle, and, and uh, at one point we had hogs and chickens and sheep, <laughs> and uh, now we're basically just cattle. Um, and uh, it's grown from that, and, and then in 2004, um, I came back, I'd been working off the farm, I came back to the farm part-time and worked off the farm, and then two years ago, um, my dad uh, wanted to transition and slow down some, and so he mm -hmm. retired, officially he's retired, but he, he still helps a whole lot. And then my wife, uh, her family's farm just east of Bueller, mm -hmm. and um, so we put the two farms kind of together, and so we farm uh, about 1,500 acres down south of Hutch mm -hmm. and about 500 uh, acres east of Bueller, about 20 miles away. And uh, mainly crops in the Bueller farm, crops and cattle down mm -hmm. here at Hutch. And when I was in high school, Grandpa gave me two cows to start the herd, and we've slowly built mm -hmm. to that in uh, 2004 um, when I came back to the farm more uh, we decided to move towards grass-fed beef um, and the reasoning for that was primarily to hopefully take the highs and the lows out of the market mm -hmm. and so we direct market some, we wholesale some, uh, and we sell some genetics, mm -hmm. uh, bulls and, and females into the grass-fed uh, sector primarily. Mm -hmm. um, before that we were just a, a normal cow-calf operation, sold calves at weaning at the sale barn and uh, just like many most cattle operations around the state I would say mm -hmm. um, and some of the forages that like you're seeing right here in the pictures would be a cover crop there's wheat, barley, rye, triticale, uh, vetch, uh, turnips, radishes mm -hmm. some of those kinds of things in this blend. Mm -hmm. Okay great thank you we will be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Tarwater Farm and Home has been family owned and operated since its beginning in 1978. What you need for farm and agriculture, lawn and garden, clothing and footwear, and so much more. You'll be surprised at what you'll find in this huge store. They have what you need and lots of it. So come take a look. You'll discover that customer service is first and foremost. Always has been with the Tarwaters. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. As fourth-generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work. It is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years, and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. 
KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. That's My Farm. It's brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela Demont, your guest host here with Tori Ball. So first off, Tori, tell me the difference in genetics when it comes to grass-fed beef versus conventional feedlot beef. Uh, good question. <laughs> There's a lot of different people trying to do grass-fed beef with a lot of different genetics. What we have found that works well for us in our program here in South Central Kansas is we've, we're primarily Angus and Red Angus, uh, Black Angus and Red Angus, and we have decided uh, because we're direct marketing some of our beef to customers and trying to get the best eating experience possible, uh, with, which means we need cattle that will fatten easily on grass. Um, we've gone back and we're using some genetics from many years ago, the old Aberdeen Angus genetics. Um, for example, we've got two bulls on the farm, uh, a red Angus bull, and his sire was uh, born a few years ago in Scotland. Um, in the county of Angus um, and then another bull we've got um, he's a nine-year-old now he uh, his sire was born and imported into the states uh, his sire was born in 1953 and brought into the states back when you could still import cattle mm -hmm. from the UK and uh, um, we've used him very heavily um, I'm really excited about his females the daughters he's producing um, we've sold a couple bulls out of, uh, out of him. Um, we don't sell a lot of seed stock, mm -hmm. but we sell a few bulls a year. We mainly have brought cattle in from uh, the Y Angus herd in Maryland, from a couple herds in North Carolina, and one in Pennsylvania, and then a couple herds in Montana. Mm -hmm. um, and we've tried to adapt them to South Central Kansas, and then we'll keep oh five to seven bulls a year intact we'll probably use two or three in our own herd and mm -hmm. sell the remaining ones we'll sell some bread heifers or, or open heifers every year uh, primarily to people looking to get into grass-fed mm -hmm. beef but not always um, our cattle are more moderate frame than most of the cattle today uh, in size um, but we're looking for a thousand eleven hundred to twelve hundred pound uh, finished weight steer and so most of our cows are going to be in the thousand to twelve hundred pound uh, range size. Um, Perfect. So tell me a little bit more about some uh, techniques and strategies you use to keep your uh, grass-fed cattle uh, healthy. Um, by not being able to feed grain um, we've got to have a year-round supply of grass mm -hmm. or forages, growing forages as much as possible. We will feed hay as we need to supplement, mm -hmm. but the field we're standing in now is, is a winter annual mix, mm -hmm. um, and uh, these fall calvers behind us are, are grazing that. They've been grazing on a mix like this all winter long with very few supplemented uh, bales to give them a little dry feed to mm -hmm. supplement it. Um, if we get a, a calf that gets sick or a cow that gets sick, uh, our protocol is we will give it a shot of antibiotics mm -hmm. um, to get it over that. We'll segregate it and keep records of that and uh, some of our customers don't mind if, if they've been treated once or twice mm -hmm. in their lifetime. Some don't ever want any antibiotics mm -hmm. um, and so we'll make sure that that animal would not have gotten into uh, to one of those customers that mm -hmm. doesn't want that. Okay, great, thank you. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors.
I was in an accident where I fell off a roof. I took the conventional route by using medicine and I went to see numerous doctors. I found that it really wasn't working as well as I had hoped it would. I don't know why I started to research stem cells, but I did, and I visited with the doctors. They were excellent. I had my neck done, I had my shoulders done, I had a section of my back done, my hips, my sacrum, my sciatica, and my tailbone. But it wasn't really that painful. I was surprised at how easily it was done. It took me uh, approximately four hours from the beginning to the end. Now I am having better range of motion in my arms and my neck and my back. So it's been very beneficial to me and I want to thank Kansas Regina Medical Center. It was a long road to get there, but I'm so glad that I found them. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm back here with Tori Ball to talk a little bit about his grass-fed cattle. So tell me about your pasture management and your rotational grazing. Good question. We've got uh, many different pastures and we use many different grasses. We have about 500 acres of native grass that's primarily used with the cow calves. Um, and then in the winter time, we'll, we'll be grazing winter annuals like we're standing on now. Um, and we'll plant other covers for spring and, and fall. We have a cool season mix that we finish our calves on with uh, alfalfa and a couple kinds of clovers, uh, endophyte friendly fescue, um, there's reed canary grass out there, there's broom grass out there, there's garrison creeping foxtail there, um, and that's a perennial pasture. Then we'll also have some uh, annual pastures to supplement in the uh, periods where the it gets too hot for the, the cool season grasses, which would be either uh, crabgrass or uh, sedans, millets, those kinds of uh, forages work very well for finishing for us. Um, for example, this winter annual mix that we're on standing in now, there's wheat, there's triticale, there's rye, there's barley, there's um, uh, vetch, um, there's turnips, there's radishes, um, and dwarf Essex rape. Um, and a few of the other blends, we throw some other things in as well mm -hmm. uh, from the cover crop standpoint. But we do a lot of cover cropping um, with our, our tilled or our no-till farm ground, but also for cattle for feed. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your agro-tourism business and how you have some crops that you still market. Um, kind of like our, our ground where we have many different uh, uh, species growing most of the time with our cover crops. Nature likes diversity. Um, so do my wife and I. We have the cropping business obviously at both farms. We have the cattle business and my wife is part of a sweet corn uh, business with her sister. She and her family also have a corn maze and a pumpkin patch um, up at Bueller and uh, she has a metal art business um, and then uh, Dad and I have two sludge hauling businesses uh, to help supplement and, and fertilize the ground as well. So you of course don't feed uh, that corn and that grain to your cattle, so then what do you do with it? Correct. We feed no grain to our cattle except, I, I can't lie, we've got one 18 year old cow still at the house. I want one more calf out of her and she is getting supplemented with grain, but none of the other cattle on our property get grain. Mm -hmm. uh, all the grain that we produce wheat, milo, soybeans, corn uh, goes to town to the elevator or we do produce uh, seed wheat and uh, seed soybeans for Kaufman Seeds which is located uh, near Yoder. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. 
we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela DeMott, your guest host here at the Grassroots Cattle Company. So first off, tell me a little bit of some trends you've seen over the years and how you've dealt with those trends. When we started thinking about grass-fed beef in 2003, 2004 and decided to take the leap, um, we really didn't know what our customer base would be to a certain degree. Uh, we knew there were some nationwide kind of buyers um, but over the years we've developed enough of a clientele locally that we sell everything um, off the farm, uh, goes to Yoder Meats seven miles away, it's everything we produce is butchered there and either wholesaled or sold retail uh, locally mm -hmm. uh, to friends, family and, and other customers. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting many of, I'd say actually most of our customers um, that buy our beef were either non-red meat eaters or um, they weren't eating beef at all mm -hmm. for whatever reasons and for some reason they they have come back and decided they wanted to eat grass-fed beef um, and most of them want want the story they want to know it's locally produced they mm -hmm. want to know who produced it and um, that's where our, the majority of our customer base has come from mm -hmm. And what are some challenges you've seen over the years uh, since you've been in this industry? The biggest challenge um, is weather. Um, a few years ago, our finishing pasture was totally flooded out and we lost all our forage that we were gonna finish those calves on and we had to go to plan B and plan C really quickly. Um, we have irrigation and we, we graze under irrigation, which helps and that's, an advantage we have that I know not everybody has, um, but so we can somewhat pr protect ourselves from drought in the finishing herd by doing that. But um, flooding actually was worse than than the <laughs> drought for us um, from that challenge. But just dealing with the weather and keeping that energy level um, high enough to finish them on, and that's the reason we we only butcher um, the fat steers from. June, primarily June through September when mm -hmm. we've got good growing grass and mm -hmm. they've been on that grass for a few months. Um, and uh, um, in the wintertime, we just can't seem to get the gains that we need to get mm -hmm. to finish cattle. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to grass-fed beef, how do you uh, market that? We've got a website, um, grassrootscattle.com, uh, but most of our customers were actually word of mouth from mm -hmm. friends and family. We have three major uh, wholesale outfits that are within a 10 mile radius of here. Yoder Meats, the, the meat that they sell, most of it goes into their three Wichita retail stores. Mm -hmm. uh, Jayco Farms um, near Hutchison um, buys a number for their store. They have a farm store. And Jackson Meats and Smith's Market mm -hmm. in Hutchison also sell. And then we'll sell by the quarter, by the half, or by the whole. Mm -hmm. Uh, directly off the farm for uh, retail mm -hmm. uh, to friends, family, and, and other customers. Okay, great. Thank you, Tori. We will be right back after these messages from our sponsors.
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Are your cows practical or profitable? If you want them to be both, come to the Dale Banks Angus Bull Sale Saturday, November 17th near Eureka, Kansas. Selling 140 yearling and coming two-year-olds who have spent their days on the rugged pastures of the Flint Hills. For 114 years, the Perriers have been focused on providing hard-working, balanced trade bulls for progressive cattlemen nationwide. Make plans to join us November 17th or pre-register to bid online. For more information and to view our catalog, visit www.dalebanks.com. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela Demott, your guest host here with Tori Ball with the Grassroots Cattle Company in Hutchison, Kansas. So first off, tell me a little bit about um, the growth and um, the future of this operation. The limiting factor in our operation is our land base. Uh, Grass-fed cattle take more land than feedlot cattle obviously do. And there are opportunities within grass-fed beef. It, it's a segment of the beef industry that's growing very rapidly. I know we could easily double the herd and, and sell everything we could produce. Mm -hmm. Um, here locally yet and we just don't have the land base to do that. Um, if the opportunity presents itself we'll try and do that either from a cropping side or the cattle side mm -hmm. um, but at, right now we're probably maxed out about where we're at. Mm -hmm. And uh, elaborate a little bit more on the future of this farm and how uh, you took over from your father. When, when my father and, and my wife's father decided to retired two years ago. We've transitioned all the management to us now. Um, they're still helping a lot, uh, like I had said previously, but uh, um, it's been a very smooth process. Um, we're trying to just get our feet underneath mm -hmm. us by buying equipment and, and getting the land base uh, locked in long-term for us. And so future plans we really haven't decided. Um, we would sure love to have family uh, take it over in the future, but that's mm -hmm. going to be up to them. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, we just see ourselves continuing this path as long as we can. Mm -hmm. And on the agro-tourism side, do you continue or plan to grow that as well? That's more my wife's uh, baby with her family. Mm -hmm. And every year they try and do something new for the corn maze and the pumpkin patch. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, I don't know that I'm the best one to, <laughs> to say that, but uh, as far as I know, they plan to continue for the foreseeable future with both mm -hmm. their sweet corn business and their corn maize and pumpkin patch mm -hmm. business. So having a grass-fed operation requires a significant amount of sustainability. What are some techniques, strategies that you do to ensure uh, to stay s sustainable? Everything we do around here, we, we try and think about that. Um, there's always room for improvement and mm -hmm. I'm sure there'll be new technology in the future that helps us to do that even better. Uh, cover crops and soil health is something we've really started to concentrate on mm -hmm. in the last couple years and uh, I think we're making progress but we've got a long ways to go and a mm -hmm. lot more to learn uh, about them. There's, there's so much to learn mm -hmm. about soil health and the biology within the soil and the, as uh, some people say, the livestock under the soil and, mm -hmm. and in the soil. Okay, great. Thank you, Tori. And thank you for watching this episode of That's My Farm. Stay tuned next week to see the next episode. 
closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.